Well, hello there, and welcome back to Ever After Stained Glass. I'm your host, Nina. Today we're doing an Enlightenment Sun Catcher. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more. I appreciate all of your support. This specific piece took me about seven and a half hours to do, and to be honest, no regrets. This Sun Catcher is by far my favorite one that I've done yet. The symbolism of this piece really hits deep with me. Three is my lucky number, and it's got a capstone, and a lotus, and the all-seeing eye incorporated into the overall design. I'm very aware of the law of attraction, the law of vibration, and hold symbolism really close to my heart. So this piece is definitely um, one that speaks volumes to my belief system, and the color combo on it is just rocking my world. So much so that I'm really thinking about changing my logo to this design. So enough about how much I love this thing. I think you guys get it. <laughs> A super tricky part about this design, however, is the iris and the reflective white circles within the iris but we'll use a couple different techniques whenever we get there. I'm scoring along the inner part of where the eyelid curves uh, multiple times. That's just so that I could eventually break away each part of the eyelid because trying to break away that deep of a curve, I've just not had success with it. Now the back of my glass cutter has a little metal knob that my thumb's on right now. And I'll take that and up underneath I'll just tap along the score line to help the glass break away a little bit easier. I omitted the part where I broke that eyelid two times before my third time was a charm. I was w rushing through and whenever you're trying to cut a piece like that you just can't rush it through so if you find yourself doing a piece more than once, get up, go get yourself a glass of water, go for a walk, just kind of restart your mind, come back. It isn't a race, and although sometimes, like with this piece, there's lots of little pieces that went into it, so I just felt like I was cutting forever. And that's exactly what I had to do, I just had to get up and clear my mind a little bit so that I can come back with an attitude and mindset of success. And that's what happened. Great success. So it was good. Whenever things happen like that, you just, like I always say, give yourself great. Don't lose sight of why you started this. You know, it's not about how quickly you can get it done. It's the creative process. And if you allow yourself to enjoy it, by removing the imaginary time crunch, I promise things will go a lot smoother. So for the white circles that go inside of the black iris, uh, or pupil rather, uh, need to have really small little divots that are cut out. So I change my grinder bit to one that will fit and grind out that center circle of the pupil. This specific bit doesn't continuously get wet so you'll line up the little screw there with the flat side of the shaft slide it down twist it in with your I think it's an allen wrench I don't know what that is yeah yeah I think that's an allen wrench I feel pretty proud of myself about that so see how it's sticking up that sponge on the yellow the yellow sponge in the back that's not going to touch it so i'm going to have to continuously feed water to it whenever i go to grind those pieces and same goes whenever you're using your regular bit grinder to grind down these pieces like you see here you just want to make sure your grinder stays really full of water and you're getting plenty of water on your piece and it should feed the water through the sponge onto your grinder bit easier, easier, uh, more easy. And they're pretty darn expensive, so you just want to make sure that you take really good care of your grinder, you take really care, good care of the bits, that way it'll last you a long time. 
So a few of you asked me to do a more in-depth view of how I made the little wires out of tin copper wire um, to uh, hang the piece with. So that's what I'm doing here. I have my tin copper wire, I've got my plastic paintbrush, little snippers to cut the wire, and two separate pliers to finagle the uh, wire prongs after I make the loop. So now I just cut a piece probably about four, four and a half inches long and I kind of bend it in the center and then I wrap, wrap it around uh, my plastic paintbrush three times. I just want to make sure that there's enough surface area on the loop to get a nice hold and so that it also doesn't uh, wind up bending because although this wire isn't super flimsy I just wanted to help it out a little bit so it's uh, just try to wrap it around as tightly as you can but it's not a big deal if you can't get it super tight like I did there I just pinched them together I slid it down a little bit so that I can work with it a little bit more easier and it wasn't super stuck to that top because there's a little ledge up there that it was getting stuck on. So I move it down I just hold it with my fingers and I take the pliers to the two prongs and I just twist it three times. Again, I really just want to focus on structural integrity of this hanger because ultimately this piece is what my whole piece is going to be dangling from. So I want to make sure it's real strong. Now I go to the bottom two prongs and I use my little pliers to bend out each prong and then slightly down I just bend them quickly so that the prongs will go on either side of my sun catcher and hold both sides of it. Later I'll show you uh, you know putting one on the actual piece. And there you have it. A little hook and you don't have to put on jump rings. Last video I just went in on and on about how much I love this. But yeah, pretty awesome. And you can always cut down those two prongs whenever you get to actually putting them onto your piece and cut them down to the size that you actually want them to be. I'm leaving it now just for good measure. After taping the face, I flip it over. I tin my solder tip or iron tip and clean it off like I always do before starting a project. I've already pre-cut my solder rods so that I can just easily go through and melt the solder down without holding a one pound wheel of solder. Always painting on that flux to make sure that the copper foil is nice and clean so that it'll accept the copper. I had quite a bit of difficulty, as you know, I use a iron that loses heat very quickly. And that's why you see those divoted and set, you know, at the top of the uh, pyramid, it looks real smooth, it looks real um, even flow. Uh, that's because my iron was nice and hot and the temperature on it wasn't fluctuating. And on the left side of the eye, you can see where the solder is divoted. That's just because I, whenever I put that solder there, the iron was losing heat yet again. This specific iron that I use is a Weller, and it, I like it. It's the only one that I've ever tried though, so like I had mentioned in uh, my previous videos, it. I believe doesn't serve me as well as it could but like I said last time I'm allowing my struggles with this solder to serve me rather than hinder me so honestly I really just loved doing this piece something about the lines and the symbolism I just really got lost in 
and it helped remind me why I started doing stained glass to begin with. You know, I started doing stained glass as a means to create a stained glass panel for a future greenhouse that I wanted one day for my backyard vegetable garden and it's bloomed into yet another passion that I absolutely love. Now I work a full-time job 40 hours a week for a corporate company and I'm on the phone for eight hours every day Monday through Friday and I knew starting this hobby that this was something that was going to be for my joy, my fun um, on the weekends. And it has just exploded into way more than just a hobby or side thing that I do. It's really turned into something that I am fueled and passionate about and it gives me a creative outlet that I have feel like I've never known before. I've always been very artsy, but I feel like I have missed out on stained glass my whole life. This process is one of the most magical creative outlets that I've ever tried. And if you are creative or crafty, or maybe you just fill a pull, Maybe you fill a pool to stained glass like I did. You know, it felt a little different than the other, you know, oh, that's interesting, I think I might get into that. It, it was almost like a hunger for it. And when I started doing stained glass, there was lots of learning curves. I used YouTube to do research and, you know, watching other stained glass artists do their craft and it just fueled the passion. Thinking of an idea in your head, like a picture, but then not necessarily painting it. Of course, I sketch all my patterns out and I love that creative process, but it's something that I've always done. And although I love it, I've never actually really made anything besides, you know, sculpting or out of clay or know crafting things like that I've definitely done that but stained glass is such a um, magical outlet of art expression because you can take this picture in your mind and you can create something that's tangible not only tangible but it captures light and it can capture the same amount of passion, the same amount of emotions, just in a different way. You can hang it in your window, you can uh, put it on your wall, you could hang it in your garden, and you can even use them as, you know, medallions or, you know, reminders or, you know, like this specific piece I'm doing here, it, every time that I see it, I see you know abundance and I see that I can have everything that I want it's just a matter of keeping your mindset on it and you know where these things hang you're constantly seeing it and saying wow that was in my mind and look it's out in reality in the world making its mark pull to stained glass uh, to, to start doing this hobby um, do it. I mean, I haven't, I haven't met one person or spoke to one person that has began stained glass. That's like, oh, I spent all this money and I hate it. It's, it's just magical. So, I want to encourage you to try it out if you are feeling the pull as well. So this step is where we just take that wire hanger that we created earlier and we start melting it onto the solder. I get the copper wire real nice and hot and of course you always use flux. If you don't use flux, it's not gonna stick and it's not gonna become one with your piece. The ultimate goal here is making that, those two prongs on each side of the piece become one with your piece. So you really want to get a good layer of solder down on to the wire and onto the piece. I thought that turned out really good. 
I was really happy with that. That looks beautiful. And you know, the issue is with the loops, if I was to put a loop here, I would not be confident that it would hold um, because there's just not much surface area with these little hooks. Again, I saw them first uh, time I've ever seen them or uh, really the any any time that I've ever seen them is watching Colorado uh, Glassworks. I follow her on Instagram and Facebook and she's just, I, I, I don't know if she's the one that created it, but that's where I got the idea. And it just, the structural integrity of this hoop, I feel confident that it will hold and it will never falter and it that makes me feel a lot more re reassured now this process we're just going and we're tinning the edges of the foil always remember to turn down your solder on this point because you don't want to burn through the copper foil so you just go through tap 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 try to build up the solder as much as you can on the ends this is also a part where I like cleanup. You know, whenever I solder, I make lots of beads. See those little things sticking up? I just use those beads whenever I t turn it on its side, and I just use it to build up the solder on the edges. So try not to, you know, mess with them whenever, uh, if you get a bead dropping off to the side, don't worry about it. Later, you can just use those beads to tap 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 all the way down the edges and build your solder with that um, those beads that fall off of it friendly reminder just always see how I'm, I'm turning it to where each part that I'm doing is level with gravity otherwise the beads just gonna roll right off whenever you get the solder hot on once you've built up all the edges and tend the edges you can then lay the piece flat uh, on its back and it's on its face and just touch up the edges and build up the solder because sometimes whenever you work on those edges it melts off of the front or back side without you even notice so check that pot part before you move on uh, to neutralizing the flux with some quick clean that's what I'm doing here just to stop the flux from eating into the solder those moves though mm, peek so pretty and then you put your wax on there and you get it nice in the front and back and on the sides real good leave it for 24 hours next morning grab yourself some coffee don't mind the uh, unbrushed hair it's morning and that's the first thing that I want to do whenever I wake up coffee and just get in there with a terry cloth cla ta Ooh. terry cloth rag and just go in and buff really well and get all that old wax off then I'll put my chain on this chain that I use it's really hard to open up so that's another reason why I put three loops whenever I made this hanger just to make sure that it didn't bend if there was just one loop it would have definitely just collapsed on me here and there you have it beautiful look how pretty she is Ooh, this thing has captivated me so I hope it did for you all too thank you so much for watching you all I know that again time such a precious resource and you spent the last 18 minutes with me please like and share and subscribe all the support for my channel helps me tremendously and I appreciate you guys so much if you're interested in purchasing this piece I have listed it on my Etsy shop go find me at ever after glass co thank you guys again and I hope you have a wonderful day a wonderful week stay blessed